Hello and welcome to Wasted Potential, the show where we discuss the wasted potential of our favourite plotlines. Continuing the never-ending theme of wasted potential in Mortal Kombat, let's take a look at the ever-changing motivations of Kung Lao. Kung Lao debuted in Mortal Kombat 2 as a former Shaolin monk who joins Earth's new champion Liu Kang in travelling to Outworld to avenge the massacred monks. The previous Earthram champion was Kung Lao's ancestor, the Great Kung Lao. Kung Lao II had no desire to compete in the latest tournament and thus stayed out of it. Kung Lao is then one of the few Earth heroes left to fight back the invading Outworlds forces in Mortal Kombat 3. He assists Liu Kang in taking Shao Kahn down but is seemingly killed in the process. He returns in Mortal Kombat 4's enhanced port MK Gold where we learn that he faked his death so he could go off and live the peaceful life he'd always wanted. He returns not to join his allies in fighting off Shinnok but instead to settle the score with Goro who had started his stint as champion by killing Lao's ancestor. Lao and Goro make peace and the monk returns to a peaceful life but now back in the open. It's by disguising himself as Kung Lao that Shang Tsung is able to get close enough to Liu Kang to kill him in Deadly Alliance. Kung Lao is the one to find the body and joins his allies in seeking revenge on the titular alliance. However, the heroes that make it to Shang Tsung's palace, Lao included, are subsequently killed. After a brief stint as a resurrected thrall of Onaga in Deception, he joins up with the forces of Light and Armageddon to stop the villains from becoming all-powerful. He kills Baraka and is then killed by Shinnok, ending his involvement in the original timeline. This this Kung Lao was an honourable man who, despite wanting nothing more than to live a peaceful life, was more than willing to step in and aid his friends or avenge his brethren when the need arose. This is in stark contrast to the next incarnation of the character. In between Deception and Armageddon, Kung Lao starred alongside Liu Kang in the adventure spin-off Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks. This game reimagined MK2 with a more fleshed out story that contradicts a lot of the original canon. Here Lao is eager to compete in the tournament to avenge his ancestor, going so far as to sneak onto the island during MK1, despite Liu Kang having been chosen to represent the Shaolin. This desire is expressed through Lao's intense, envious animosity towards his comrade, which presents him as a complete dick who is constantly pissed off at his fellow monk for having the fucking gall to save Earthrealm in his place. After briefly being turned against each other by Shang Tsung, neither really took all that much convincing, the two are able to band together to defeat Shao Kahn without either having really learned anything. This game probably wouldn't have meant anything thing if Armageddon hadn't acknowledged the two monks rivalry which only existed in Shaolin Monks. For the incontinuity reboot in Mortal Kombat 2011, the writers needed a solidly defined personality for Kung Lao so they opted to combine the two previous characterizations in what honestly was one of the better decisions made by the writing team. Lao is no less eager to prove himself and honour his ancestor than he was in Shaolin Monks but he retains his more noble spirit from the older games. This is shown when he actually congratulates Liu Kang on his victory and how happily celebrates alongside his new allies instead of just stewing in his envy and loathing. This was a good direction to take the character and a good way to combine his two diametrically opposed personas from past games. Now where I feel there is wasted potential is actually not as one might expect from how his story plays out in the reboot timeline, his pointless death and revival as an unsavable revenant. Rather, I feel that the backstory they have crafted in MK2011 has a lot of potential if you delve into his backstory and his mindset even further. First off, Kung Lao is a Shaolin monk of the White Lotus Society trained in the martial arts from a young age for a single purpose. The Mortal Kombat tournament, held every 50 years, will be taking place while Lao is in his prime. The last Earthrealm champion was his ancestor, who lost to Goro nine tournaments ago. This means that Earthrealm is in a dire situation as one more loss will allow Shao Kahn to invade and conquer the realm. So while he may not want to live the life of a warrior, Kung Lao understands the necessity of doing so and dedicates his life to pursuing this goal, even if if he doesn't like it. One thing to keep in mind here is that, well, Kung Lao is Chinese. Familial responsibility and expectations are a major factor in many Asian countries, with China being easily one of the most prominent examples. As the direct descendant of Earthrealm's last champion and bearing his ancestor's name, Kung Lao would have utterly crushing expectations placed upon his shoulders from birth. Maybe he was given the name to inspire him to work harder, or in hopes the Elder Gods would bless him somehow. Either way, much is expected and demanded of Kung Lao. This is not the case, however, with Liu Kang, Kung Lao's best friend from the Wuxi Academy. Liu Kang is sometimes referred to as the Great Kung Lao's descendant as well. For reasons outlined in the pilot episode of Cannonball, I'm inclined to believe this connection is still considered canonical. Plus, it adds extra depth to Lao's characterization, so I'm going to proceed as if it is canonical. 
Not carrying the Kung family name, being born to a branch of the family rather than the core Kung lineage, Liu Kang has nowhere near as much expectation placed upon him as Lao does. And on top of that, we learn in MKX that Lao has a younger cousin, Jin, who idolises him. If we assume Jin is around 4 or 5 by the time of the tournament and Lao's death in Outworld, this just adds even more pressure to Lao as he doesn't want to let his young cousin down. No such idolisation is indicated towards Liu Kang, which could help Lao feel better about himself, but also deepens his pressure even further. Both cousins continue to train into their 20s when the tournament is set to take place. Whether by judging or a contest of some sort, a single monk will be chosen to compete in the tournament. This is it. Kung Lao finally has his chance to prove himself, to prove that the Kung bloodline is still going strong, to prove that he is worthy not only of the faith that has been placed in him since birth, but also of bearing his ancestor's name and being given the opportunity to follow in his footsteps and mirror his namesake's achievements by saving Earthrealm. But, as we all know, he is not the one who is chosen, is he? Liu Kang is the one to be chosen, or who proves the most worthy. Liu Kang, son of the offshoot of the family, born with no expectations, no responsibilities, who perhaps chose to be a warrior, or at least accepted his lot in life out of desire rather than resignation. Kung Lao never wanted this life, this responsibility, or this name. It was all forced on him at birth. He has never had the luxury to choose for himself what he wanted out of life, but he soldiered on anyway because he understood that the stakes were too high for him to refuse. He he gave up his entire life for this, spent 20 years pushing himself to the absolute limit, forcing himself to be the best damn warrior he possibly could, and in the end... It was all meaningless. Liu Kang will have the opportunity to compete in the tournament to avenge their ancestor and restore honour to their family, while Kung Lao has to stay behind and wallow in his own ineptitude. He can, ironically, now go and live the peaceful life he always wanted, but as a consolation prize rather than a reward. From this perspective, Kung Lao's envy of Liu Kang is much more justified. So is his determination to compete regardless, stowing away aboard Shang Tsung's ship and waiting for the right time to reveal himself. But while this could somewhat justify his Shaolin Monk's personality, I think it makes him a far more complex, introspective character if we also try and maintain his less dickish persona. He is envious of Liu Kang and perhaps somewhat resentful, but he is also fully aware that Liu Kang hasn't actually done anything deserving of such feelings. It's not like he went out of his way to make Kung Lao's life into a complete waste of time. In practical terms, the fact that there is another warrior greater than Lao is a good thing, right? It gives Earth a better chance of not being conquered after all, and Earth needs the best fighter it can possibly get for the 10th tournament. Lao understands this, understands that these emotions he's feeling are not fair to Kang, but he can't help how he feels, and he hates himself for that. I've explored this concept in a few chapters of Mortal Kombat Chronicles. Links are available in the description. There, Kang can tell that something's bothering his cousin, and Lao opens up about it. They talk it out, and Lao even gives Kang a gift. See, the great Kung Lao is usually depicted with a red bandana and a pair of gauntlets, which would become iconic parts of Liu Kang's design from MK2 onwards, even being retconned into his MK1 attire from Shaolin Monks onwards. So I figured these could be inherited from their shared ancestor, but kept within the core Kung family, until Lao gives him to his cousin for luck. While it was only recently covered in an actual chapter, I wrote this scene with the idea of these items being Chekhov's guns, items established early in a story so they can be utilised at a key moment later on. In this case, these two gifts would prove vital to Liu Kang's victory in the tournament. The bandana might keep a head wound from bleeding into his eyes, or maybe he covers his eyes with it to protect them from reptile's acid, for example. The gauntlets, more prominently, resist Goro's powerful grip as he attempts to crush the monk's wrists, holding out just long enough for him to get out of the the Shokan's hold and ultimately emerge victorious. Liu Kang would then tell Kung Lao about this upon his return. Through this, Lao receives the vindication he so desperately needed. While he may not have had a chance to compete in the tournament himself, his ability to recognise his own character flaws and put aside his pride to assist his cousin ultimately proved vital to Liu Kang's ability to save Earthrealm. And perhaps Liu Kang always saw Kung Lao as a rival, which pushed him to strive even harder for greatness. The 20 years Kung Lao dedicated to saving Earthrealm were not wasted. In fact, they were just as important as the time Liu Kang himself dedicated to this. Thanks to this vindication, Kung Lao is finally able to move on and actually live the life he always wanted, but he will also stand alongside his allies when he is needed. Only now, by his own choice. 
It's fascinating what you can sometimes come up with when you combine two very different versions of the same character into a single depiction. It doesn't always work, probably usually doesn't, but sometimes you can create something truly special. For once, the MK writers didn't ruin a character with the new timeline's depiction, the revenant business notwithstanding. They struck gold with their new take on Kung Lao and with just a little more focus on character rather than childish shock value, he could have been, much like his ancestor, great. If you liked this video, why not subscribe, check the description for more content and support me on Patreon like these fine people here. If not, then make sure to share it with your enemies so they can suffer along with you.